cash to fold. None of my cars are gold. Digital dash on gold. Cash is digital, digital, digital. The dash is digital. Go, go, go. Digital, digital. Digital, digital. The cash is digital. Digital, digital. The dash is digital. Run it up. Stepping, I feel like the guy. I got them looking like why. I never doubted me why. I never doubted my guys. You know you in it for win. I stand on ten, you on ten. I don't have friends of a friend. Only the fan, the kin. Only my wife and my kids. That's all I needed to win. Now I only trust my true friends. Had to cut off my loose ends. You know I win if you win. You know you win if I win. I swipe that cash don't fold. I swipe my bank on gold. Don't think that I've been dumb. I spend like I've been broke. I'm just trying to feed my kids. I'm just trying to keep my way. I'm just trying to live my life while we get rich. Mind my business. Money gon' come, some go. Man, if you know, you know. I've been through highs and lows. Here for the ride, I go. Slide and roll. Up and down, but I get up. The numbers crunching, no sit ups. I grew up and got dripped up. Purple label, my get up. That's one on one, not a one and done. Month to month, and there's more to come. I told Cushy, let's run it up. Now it's millions on millions. I 
Tonight, as we take a look at these cool looking little charts here and make a few little adjustments on this microphone, bring it on in, baby, bring it on in just a little bit more there. Studying the six minute chart because it holds the key to our future. Not. It is worthwhile to look at, track the charts, track Bitcoin when she's just kind of boring and slowly. Losing progress, man. Right over here, even on the six minute chart, though, we've got this little. A lot of wiki wiki. Wiki wiki wiki. We made a lower low. Just in case you didn't know. Everybody's out there talking crazy about crypto. People are talking about capitulating, selling off. Getting out now because it's going to go much. It could. I mean, you know, but gosh darn it, man. Shouldn't we wait for uh, some kind of confirmation? I mean, I don't know. We, uh, no one plays this market perfect. So should always keep that in the forefront of our mind. Then no one's going to nail it just perfect. But you at least want to kind of not screw up. That's the big thing. So in the live streams, which uh, you'd be up 120% if you had been on the live stream with us, with our members only. We had a live stream and, and kind of mentioned this idea of a range. Some savvy analysts are looking at this as a possible Wyckoff reaccumulation, and I am not going to disagree with that. In the big scope of things, when I zoom out on big old bitty Bitcoin, um, I don't know what would what would be the smart thing to do in this situation. I mean, if you had control, what would be the the smart thing to do? I mean, definitely, definitely. You know, when we look back to the swing high, but before and came all the way down to the swing low. I mean, we we had this area here at six one eight. That was the perfect area to come back for any kind of a serious bigger retest and. 
somehow, you know, we, we did a little bit and then we just blasted through it. And then we came up to 786 and that was another great area that we should have had a, you know, and could have had a nice little hiccup or a big pullback for something scarier, you know, if we needed to take a break. But at 57,000, you know, back in February, all the ETF news coming in, well, nobody really thought about it pulling back and taking a break. It was just pedal to the metal. We came up to the 886 area over here at 63,000, and uh, we still had to pedal to the metal. We, we just kept driving prices up to 69, 70, 72. We came back and checked it out a little bit there at that uh, 886 area right here about 63 we, we checked it out a couple of times that's kind of been an area that's uh we've been checking out more often than not on any of the others that's just what the chart says so uh <clears throat> might that mean something <clears throat> maybe did you erase it idiot you're supposed to be so professional never will you hear me call myself a professional traitor Professional investor, though, I don't know. I could, um, I... I'm going to go ahead and mark this little guy because he interests me. I mean, he's been there just staring us in the face for the past, I don't know, four or five weeks. Might ought to take a look at him, right? Call him Mr. Purple. Mr. Purple line. Lock him in there. Mr. Purple's coming in. What are you, Mr. Purple? 63? Can we call you 63,000, Mr. Purple? All right, Mr. Purple. You seem to be playing into our plan here just a little bit, Mr. Purple. On this weekly chart. See that we're above you right now, Mr. Purple. That's kind of good on the weekly. Lots of weekly candles above you. Might we keep you up there, Mr. Purple? Look at this little red dotted line that we drew over there earlier, right? See this on the weekly, how it's just right at the bottom of that candle close, where they kind of just wick down to, didn't quite touch with their wicks there. These are two very important levels that we should keep an eye on. So these two important levels, 59,000 and um, also 63. Now we kind of took the temperature here on the bigger time frames. Got a 21 moving average down here on the 20, um, and near this trend line, what is that, about 53? It's an area that a lot of people were calling for, and it could happen, definitely could happen. Looks like we lost a, a bit of a parabola, which I probably knew that thing, I don't. Well, let's get rid of that piece of eye candy so it doesn't distract us from uh, the real important things, which is a trend line also suggest that in all probabilities yeah we could see these areas 54 53 that is on the table on the weekly below the nine moving average ichimoku cloud says boy i've got something in store for you you just hold on ichimoku clouds are still rock our worlds even though it may not be this week may not be next week but there's a week that she's got in mind that she's ready to just um, blow everybody's freaking mind <laughs> Now, call me crazy after I get a trend line like this. I just like to see, you know, put it up to areas that we've passed, broke out of. And I, I here on the weekly, I still get that. And I'm still looking at a possible retest. And, and that's what I've been going over in my theory of a, where we are in Bitcoin for real, for real. A lot of these things aren't adding up. Adjust this a little bit more on the daily here. Candle close, top. We got some touches confirming this angle that we've got. Oh no, did you break in? That's what I don't want to see. So now I got to get anal here for a minute. Make sure I got my angles. Because if she's breaking in on this particular time frame, hmm, well that could be a first sign of trouble that we want to be aware of, right? Right, right. And she's a try it. Okay, so I'm comfortable with my OCD-ness coming out on these line angles. It's just something I attribute to WD GAN. And we 
have wicked through here and we have made it weaker. Even if I tweak the trend lines a little bit, not much room to move. Here we are on the one hour, coming down to the smaller time frame, and we did make that lower low. That lower low is not something great for us, but we are respecting this trend line to some degree, popping back above it. Don't know for sure if she's going to hold. So I went to the one hour a little too quick. Here we are on the four hour. Now we can start turning to our moving averages here and we see that we're under the, the, the 200. So yeah, we're under 200, whatever time frame they're on, we consider that to be bearish. Just a, a general moving average rule. And if you have a 50 moving average that's crossing negatively over that 200, well, that's called the death cross, meaning that you can you know, sell everything, get out of the market, crypto's a scam. Um, it means, you know, we're going to could possibly have a trend reversal. That's what everybody's scared of. So what we're trying to monitor here. Is this a triple top? We've already went through that on the patterns and it does make a triple top pattern. Are we going to get the reversal? The one lesson that I think that I've learned the most through here is just how much that I now respect this 3618 Fibonacci area when I pull the 3.618. 3 and I, that one has a <clears throat> never again will I ever doubt you. That's for dang sure. Never again will I ever just underestimate you is a better way to put that. Oh, we got something. We got one. We got some nibble down here. Do you see that? Swing low. And we got a little touchy touch. Make sure it touches now. I want you on a candle body. Right there. That's where we had you first. Is there any angle to that dangle? I'm playing with trend lines right now. Sometimes I do that. There is a, you know, this is a possible support line and that could be where we're, you know, a brunt of where we're finding some support there that and this little horizontal one horizontals usually trump over the uh, diagonal ones just to throw that out there they are more steady if you were to thinking of this as a step a level ground or something so if you're putting your foot on the test the weight, you you can um, put more weight onto these horizontal supports generally than you can diagonal however you know, all those times you expected price to come back to that horizontal support for that buy-in? Well, I almost guarantee you there was a diagonal in there that just kind of snapped it up in front of you. So, diagonals are cool to track. I'm just saying. So, the four hour might be catching the bounce here. That's nice. But uh, we got the old death cross. That's not so cool, right? Losing this trend line, man, that would put us down to 54. That would definitely... And losing this uh, red dotted line, which is the main one. But getting back to the other theory that uh, where this could be the reaccumulation, well, I like that. If I have personally have no confirmation yet on this chart, but if I had to throw what my think, what what I think is going on here. Not calling it, but if I had to just kind of, if you want to, hey, Road Dog, but seriously, man, what, what do you kind of think? What I really think is, was this is probably reaccumulation. And then on the bigger time frames, we're going to see them get shaken out, and everybody's going to get scared out, and then we're going to see prices may come down, and they could wick hard one day. I don't know. Maybe they will flip us down there for a day in the lower 50s. Who knows? But they're going to shoot this price up, and it's going to look a lot like it did. Not even on this particular chart, is it? It's going to look a lot like it did back here. Right here. And if I had to say, you are here at this moment. Well, first, I would want to go back to our previous all-time high there and draw a little line. And then I would be looking for the uh, the area that we 
bumped up to and then had her big drop. And I would say that if we had to go back, that we are probably very reminiscent of this area about November 2020 when Bitcoin came up here to about 20,000 and then shot back and lost its area to 16,000. Scaring everybody, bringing the bears in, saying 3,000's a common market in stone. And even when she came back and regained her ground, dropped back again. And back then, uh, that was a nice little 15% pullback and we've been through a little bit more. Time-wise, it makes sense that we would be there. It feels more like this one up here. This pullback was from 42,000 all the way back down to 28. Now that's a 31 percenter. Well, that's a little bit more what we feel right here. Maybe, maybe I digress. Maybe we're not here. Maybe we're up here already. That's interesting. I like how she lost her trend right here. Came back into it, retested it, and boom. We reached, what, 73,000 and pulled back just at the very worst 19%. That is a little bit more akin to that little first little bump we looked at, really. Remember this one was, here was 19% on that. Woo! This was FT, I think this was F2 pool. The miner selling off after the happening, if I remember correctly. That was a scary drop, but we recovered. We did just fine. Altcoins took a big old nasty pullback. Everybody thought it was over, just like they did back here at the little shallow pullback, which is really a little bit closer, really, truly, to where we are now, I think. I wanted to call that back, because that was just a 16%. We're at a 19%. So the question I got to poise to you, have you learned any lessons from this pullback that you might want to apply in case price does start recovering? And then we get a big pullback, because this big one is coming. The big 30 percent is coming. And this is going to make this one that we just went through look like nothing. For me personally, I did better taking profits, getting some of that dry powder. But, uh, you know, honestly, I, I put a lot of what I kept aside. But some of that, that I did not mean to put back into the market. I put it back in there as a safety cushion on a, a, some margin positions just as a backup plan. So what I can do better is I'm definitely going to work on taking profits uh, a little bit better, work on my little 5% strategy a little better. That's where I take out 5% of the majority of the bags each month, whatever they happen to be. If we're up, calculate 5% and then pull that out. And if I do that each month, in about 18 months, man, <laughs> when this market's almost over, I'm pretty sure that I've got a nice little bag. I'm not going to be riding this roller coaster down. And then I can start targeting what I think are going to be the top, top areas and, and, and all that and put another strategy to try to well, nail the little, you know, last little bits or whatever. But along the way, yeah, we're set. And the end of it would just be the, the cherry on top, the icing on top of the cake. So ladies and gentlemen, let's get to the altcoin, shall we? We had um, someone ask for rune. Got lost in Bitcoin there. That does happen. I am in rune and rune has taken a nosedive. And if you think about it from these aspects, is she starting to look like she might turn out to be a nice little trader coin as um, when she has these nice little ups and downs. She's still making higher highs and higher lows. They're still in an upward trend and until she comes back below this area right here. 382. She breaks that, then, you know, we got to talk. But until then, she is still in. She's still safe. 
sucks that we lost this trend line. That was kind of important. The first sign that, uh, you know, the next time we come down and talk to it that we probably wouldn't hold was when it wicked through right here. Even though it wicked through and it gave us a great move all the way up to like $11. Gosh darn it, I wish I'd sold more there. I did take some profit out of Rune, but um, I'm moonbagging this little baby. And I decided, well, hey, might as well take some of this moon bag and put it over on spot margin and see if we can get a double moon bag. So that's what I'm doing right now. And so I get to take advantage of these little prices. I may have to throw some more rune over there and cover this little dip. But I will build that position up no matter how far down rune goes. We're getting ready to go into probably one of the biggest bull markets ever in crypto. And um, I can't just... Uh, let the little market makers think that I'm going to fall for this little trick to come down here and possibly make a little lower low at the moment, even though we could. So we've kind of met targets and uh, we got new information here and we're going to... Oh, I well, I don't want to miss... Yeah, let's do it. Just do some quick evaluations here, draw a few little, some of our lines that we just kind of track. Uh-huh, that's interesting. So just do this really quickly here. I'm on what, I'm on what the daily chart here. So this is a good longer term look, midterm hold type situation. So when you see me shining now, know it's anything but look. I'm looking in the mirror at the only one I f with. I've been held me down. So when you see Won't me now, I'm not You got to love the O confluence. So when you see me shining now, you got to respect this 361, though. I'll tell you that. Yeah, yeah, we had it tough. Yeah, yeah, we had the pressure and the pressure done its tough. Oh, I'm not flexing when I'm brushing off the dust. No, all this pain and the tears made my shoulders rust. So, good old Rune, if she comes down any further, we've been looking at this area about 391. I don't think she's going to quite make it down there, personally, myself. Makes me want to see you, makes me want to see more, makes me want to see through. Maybe we become one. Maybe this is the thing. There's she is at an 886. Retracement area, and this is a great place for her to actually find support. If I see a bounce here, I think that would be interesting. Uh, place to look at. Well, if there's a confirmed bounce, definitely. I'm on the daily, and I'm not seeing the sign of a confirmed bounce. But our 200 or 100 or 50, all the momentum average, the heavier ones are up and to the right. They're great. It's just as nine. I'm trying to kamikaze now. It may cut over the 200. That might be what takes us down to these lower areas. But if so, then I expect them to hold. 
you I looked up to they showing and you know rune will have to go through therapy and go through you know some counseling and things like that until she kind of recovers from the PTSD of all this stuff and recovers back over this trend line or finds her own way underneath it however I mean that's not the greatest thing but uh, for accumulating this yeah this is a great buy zone in my personal opinion if she does break below this area that would be a warning sign that there would be something nasty 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 happening and that would be the area that I would that would be my capitulation line is what I'm trying to say make a lower low than this that that would probably be a bad sign and I don't mean wicking below it but I really don't even want to see that but any candle closest below that would not be good there is one last little trend line that might so oh, come on now don't make me have to backtrack this trend line says that there's a possibility of 328 could be the bottom of it but also remember we broke out of that <laughs> and if I can say that part well I've got to be able to say that will you also give us another little higher place that we might find support about 408 so bad news comes with a little bit of good news attached to it in that case let's watch that on room but I am in room with you let's see going back to the chat I'm looking for the other request there there was a uh, I think it's it's Remy If I got the wrong one. There we go. Had the wrong chat up, I think. Can I do Solana, Ada, one base, Riot platform? Might have to clarify the right pl platform, but uh, let go ahead and get started on Solana. Solana! What you doing, Solana? So far, so good. That trend line is holding up. I, You know, we should hope for a bounce here. If we don't get it, that's not going to be great. Again, kind of the same situation with the coin we just looked at with um, on the daily chart with the 200, the 100, and the 50 all going up into the right like they're supposed to. That's the brunt of this whole move, and they're not in danger. It's just that price is being unruly, and the other moving averages are just kind of following it around. So it's got a good chance to bounce here. I mean, it can wick down below to the areas it has before, this horizontal support line, 126 in that area. But this line has a really good chance of holding here at this 100 moving average here on the daily. So I see that. It's a little silver red showing up on the cloud. But, you know, market cipher's looking interesting. It's got the little green dot. Money flow's kind of down to the downside, but stochastics, which are hard to see down here, but uh, they're down here in the bottom. And at some point, they're going to flip and start going to the upside, and that's when the move is going to be in force. So stochastics are cool to watch in a situation like this. See what our RSI is saying. RSI is in market cipher, but it's just uh, it's, it gets lost. So I have to have it separate because I like to do some other stuff like look for trend lines for it, things like that, and track it. So RSI is down at the bottom on the daily where you want it to be. This is my area. Technically, just the this indicator alone, when it crosses back over this 30% area, when it rebounds and when it crosses over there, that is technically your buy signal on this or your trigger if you're looking to get into a trade or one of a trigger so when you get stochastic here is the this is a great example we have to stop the music because it is not often that this occurs and it's not often that I get to share this so here is something cool. I'm on a daily chart. There's no music. We'll make it sexy. Yeah, because this is sexy. This rarely, 
rarely happens, but this is something that you should always be on the lookout if you're wanting to find something that is going to be a killer entry because it usually plays out. And I guess I got to put my... Put my nuts to the wall here. What's another term? Have to edit that out, I wanna. So I got a trend line that's in danger of breaking, but let me show you what's really juicy, what I like here. If we bring up Market Cipher, or just basically the RSI, the stochastic RSI, she is here, she sees yellow line, and she tracked down, and now she's down at the bottom doing something. But the point is she's down at the bottom on a big time frame like the daily. Now, if by chance, and it does not happen often, but if you see that that also lines up with That also lines up with your regular RSI also being buried at the bottom on the daily. This is a double decker. This is one of the best strategies out there. One on top down. When this one comes back up above the 30 and you see the stochastics going up at the same time on a bigger time frame, that is one of the very best buy signals that you can look for. That is when you nail a bottom. And that'll work on this asset, any asset, but on the bigger ones, this is how we nail bottoms. And this is an excellent way to nail tops. So if you see the opposite true prices at a high somewhere and on a bigger time frame, the stochastics are also at a high and your RSI is at a high coming down. There's your sell signal. But that is pure alpha. It doesn't happen very often, so we don't get to really point a whole lot of attention to it. But right now on Solana, on the daily, we're seeing that. And even though this looks like a risky area, we do have confidence with the 100 moving average support there. Previous trend line, main trend line, high above the 200 moving average. And we just got the two bottom buy signals from the stochastic RSI and the regular RSI on the daily. And if you needed just a little booster, although she's often late to the party, she is starting to kind of come right around the corner here. Miss MACD, when she starts to curve up and we see these cross, of course you would have already seen the brunt of the move by the time those two cross, but right here, we got the early signs with our RSI saying, Maybe Solana look like she's getting ready to bounce up and she may have to struggle and do something, but she fed up with these bottom prices. 133, uh, from what the RSI is telling me, baby, she did not want to go lower. She's ready to move to the upside. Solana look cool. If she does break this trend line, run for the hills. <laughs> I'm just saying. No, no, it looks good. It looks good. That's a really good sign. Coming up to the bigger time frames. Here. Now that weekly MACD don't look so healthy though. I don't look horrible. I don't want to scare you, but I mean. Weekly MACD looked like um, she need to duck lip is what she need to do. You got to watch out for that. It can happen, but uh, careful, man. Careful. It's not written that she's not going to break through. She's got a good chance to bounce here. Even on this one with the weekly 21 moving average there. Nice. And what else did we have? We had uh, Ada. Done the whole. That's cool. So here on Cardano, on the what are we on the three day, got the two hundred moving average. Now here we got the fifty crossing over. That's our good old golden cross. That's your buy signal. Doesn't mean necessarily buy right now, but it means buy the 
the, the closest pullback, which she pulled back some more and got down to 44 cents. So that was official buy signal. And then you got the 100 that crossed it and you're thinking, well, number go up again. Yes, that's bullish. And it is bullish. It is, but check this out, yo. When the 100 crosses it, what happens, man? We're bullish, but then price sometimes likes to come back and test it to make sure. Are you real 100? For real, for real? Uh, you, you'll hear me say that over and over because, well, that's just what I know just happened. And uh, it's the one in that I throw out when that happens. So if you ever see the 100 getting ready to cross over the 200 moving average, especially on these bigger, well, on any time frame, and you're trying to buy a pullback, realize that you got a chance. I can't I haven't really um, put a statistic to it, but I would say it's guesstimating probably about one out of three times. She at least comes back and touches it or gets awfully dang close. Just a little bit of a moving average alpha to throw out there. So meaning that she's retesting this so she could get a bounce off of it, right? The only thing is that, you know, you got this previous trend line now um, that's going to be some resistance. But, you know, that's kind of from where we are right now. That's all the way back at 60 cents. So, you know, we're cool. We're cool, right? And I love it when you throw it. When we zoom out on Cardano, we see that we broke to the upside of this uh, phone channel and exceeded our expectations of the just your basic measure move there. Oh, you could have went from all the high all the way down to the lows and lows to this little wiki wiki. And then that would have given you a less well though. Alternative measure move up here at 78 cents. Uh, you could have done that and played that. There's no guarantees, but I mean, if you're looking for that little bonus target, okay, well, there's, there's a way to go. I think we've already spent that line. I don't think we need him anymore. Clean up these charts. Those other two targets can stay. They're fine. I believe. I think they are. Bit blinds. So Cardano, if we're going by our fibs, finding support the 618 like she should after wicking down to that 200. You know, a chance for 35.8, but I'm not really seeing it. Although, I mean, it's on the table. If this area is lost, then that's the first area I would look for. But it does look like there would be some areas here at that 200 moving average, some little areas of support over to the left to kind of help us out a little bit there. So for real, I think that we are that 40 cent area looks like it might be the it's as low as I can see unless something, you know, really more bearish starts happening in the market. But it looks like it should be good support here, 40 cents. And then kind of looking back up to this 58 area. And maybe 66. So she said an area, we just got, what you want to watch out for is any type of bearish retest of, well, this area here. And then at the worst of it, we're probably ranging and just reaccumulating. Eventually there will be a bigger move up and get out of this accumulation zone. And that's basically all that's going on for these altcoins that I'm seeing on the charts is that we're just testing and retesting some, um, or breaking out and retesting some accumulation zones on the bigger picture. So, I mean, bailing out of altcoins at this point in the game, especially if you're, I mean, unless you've got some high position leverage trades or, you know, some high leverage trades or higher leverage and trying to mitigate risk. If you just been on spot and accumulating, got your bags, um, I wouldn't let this shake me out at all. I'm like, you got to get used to this. It's just a little taste of it. What you got to do instead is start peeling off some profits when we're up there and when your portfolio is looking like, oh, look. Look, Francis, look how much crypto is up. I told you you should have got in. 
that's when you should be paying yourself or taking profits then because probably three days from there you're going to Francis <laughs> going to say how's that crypto holding up for you guardy yes you suck Francis and then, and then you get into a family argument and everything just just don't go there just don't go there We also had um, Coinbase, I guess the stock. Probably need to see that myself. I need Tesla to like 10X. This is what I freaking need. Cause I refuse to sell any more micro strategies. Micro strategies was my emergency fund. And then after a tax emergency ride to go, tax money and then she wanted to do a 10x on me and I'm like well it and that just how it works we got a little bit of something right here Oh, it looks like you're wanting to bring back in this pattern. You don't have to stay here. Although, you know, you already started the ball rolling. What are you up to here on the four hour? Possible head and shoulders. With a funky looking neckline, if you can get it out of it. Oh, it's got one. She slanted as all get out, but she connects my dots from shoulder, neck, and mutated spiky dinosaur shoulder with arm hanging down at, across the bed. I don't know what the, what. Oh my God, you didn't make it? Are you gonna make it? You take the measure, you may. You put it in and shake it all about. And that's what it's all about. And what the hell? Oh, we're coin bases. Like, what the hell? So maybe what, 200? Coming back and testing that psychological support area, 200. She did lose the 100 moving average here. So coming closer to the 200 would not be. That wouldn't be surprising at all. Bib wise, that's also the 50% move from the swing low to the swing high there. And uh, that's a little Charles Dow theory, which Wall Street, this me and one of them uh, Wall Street stocks, they kind of like that. It's That seems to work well for them, kind of like our 618s work out for us in crypto so well. Sometimes that point five works out really good for them. So uh, you got two areas, 179, possible. Um, but there might be a nice little flip here at the 200. Two areas I would consider buying. And now I have to, might have to look at it. What else can we do here that's tricky and neat and gives us some insight that we may not see any other way? That. <laughs> well, that oh, angle to the dangle trick right there says that there might be a hidden level of support along that imaginary trend line. Somewhere around $203, but shh, don't know Wall Street, we know how to do this. Get mad they send out people with black suits parking your driveway and intimidate you. You get these random little texts that say, Stick with crypto, loser! And then your bank account stops working. All right, jump back out. So I got all of them. I'm not sure exactly what we got. Unless you're talking about right blockchain or right um, right uh, the, the 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 miners, which that's probably it, right? It's just surprising that I got that there. 
without clicking that right platforms. I'm assuming this is it. If it's not, though. I was in Riot before, but I got out of the mining stocks and I got into, um, is it CLSK? Clear Springs, I think. Well, there might be a, really? Oh man, if she comes down to like 483, which looks like she can, I mean, this is my method to find it is the the EO trend lines, but uh, a lot of other people will be looking at this beautiful cup and handy to the upside, which didn't. Um, take some crazy measure, moved all the way down to zero cents or something. No, I see 483 out of this. Just uh, lines alone. And that's also coming in with the 886 FIB area. So I'm kind of, I'm, I'm liking that trend line. There is the chance that the 786 will hold a 696. So a bounce there or even a nibble there. Like, like for me, I don't have, well, I'm just going to wait till it gets down here. I'm no, I'm like, uh, I'm on a position, baby. We're at a bottom. I want a position. This thing can do numbers. So I'd be like, I'm nibbling here. And I'm nibbling here, and I might even nibble here just in case. It may not even ever hit that, but at least there's a bigger nibble there, and I can fill a bag and let's rock and roll. That's just how I do it. And then when she's already getting back to 11 and $17 and $21, and get your bags packed. And, and then, my gosh, she hit $78 before. Accumulation zones, pullback. I would be looking at some of these um, mining stocks. They were getting out of control there for a little bit, getting kind of high, but now we're in some really juicy buy zones here. Prices that we haven't seen since technically back in um, March of 2023, a year ago. We, we made lower, we're a little cheaper now than we've been in over a year. Before that, we were, you know, lucky to get below ten dollars. Clean Spark is, uh, I guess, I need to see what you're doing. Clean Spark, are you pulling back to? Oh man, come on! I want a discount too, dude. Come on! That's not fair, man. If Riot's gonna pull back, Clean Spark needs to pull back too, because that's only fair. I'll get you cheaper. Clean Spark got all the way up to. <laughs> oh yeah, I liked you. I was I was I was kind of liking Clean Spark around here, four dollars. So nice little, mm, dang girl, you looking hot? What's up with you? What is this earnings report or something? What's that mean? What was your last earnings, Clean Spark? Fourteen cents. Brr. Nice rounding shape, right? That's nice. Clean Sparky. Clean Sparky. Mm-hmm. Nice accumulation zone. Clean Sparky. Well, if something bad does happen with Bitcoin, we get a nice big pullback. I would see 696, 698 here coming back as we retest the accumulation zone. But we may just be only come back to 1077 on this little guy. If we come back at all, man, I see here on the what the four hour. We got a 200 moving average here coming in at the 0.5. And remember, for Wall Street, that is uh, that's an area that you want to pay attention to is the, the 0.5 fib. 13.23, so there are three little nibble areas. This would be beautiful, but um, doubtful, considering that we got a trend line that doesn't kind of let us go there. Starting to stack up that maybe, perhaps, that, uh, you know, down to 1230-ish, maybe, but uh, this area right here is kind of going to 
Gonna be a nice one. I want to put it on the, uh... Oh, come on. Stop sticking. Twelve fifty ish. Where the bottom of this trend line is is going to be your best deal. At some point, she's going to have to touch it. She's starting to round out a little bit, so she may be just kind of sideswipe it. I don't know. Clean smart. Nobody asked for that, so probably nobody cares. How's it going, Rising Sun? It's Remy No Limit. We're nerd. Buy a crypto. How's it going? Grabbing any zone for carry. Or any grabbing zone for carry. That looks interesting off the bat. What are we on the four hour time frame? Let's look at the daily here. Open for a breakout which did not stick. Shamey, 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 shamey. So now that's invalid. We can save it. It's a channel though. We can save it for later. Maybe she'll come down here. Wherever she does get an actual breakout from this channel, it, they will break out to the upside more than they will break to the downside. This is actually a bullish pattern, believe it or not. It just takes them a while to turn around. And there might be a. a that'll. Someone with head and, head and, head and soda fills. Soda. Head. Soda. For the upside. Could be. If a neckline, and I'm picky about my neckline, but either way, there'll be a bottoming pattern here. At some point, I would say that uh, I'm close to it. sure do use fibs a lot lately they're just so gosh darn dependable might we come down to 0 0.02 cents 0 0.203 a that 786 fib area that's likely very a little bit of a trend line there a little bit of a a little bit of a trend line fills trend line right here that might you know be worth watching for another touchdown too Oh, look, there's another one going up there. We got trend lines everywhere. They are everywhere. They're like a little mesh, a little chain fence back there, you man. And you just got to find out where the which one we're climbing up. So I would I would consider that a nice little nibble myself. I mean, there's a possibility she can break this area, and then of course we're looking at retesting the areas we're down here, and we got fib fibs are spotting them right on too, but good chance this is going to be our higher low flavor. But if not, then, you know, anywhere between there and 0 0.0088, well, I think there's a good place. Reckon's Venture says, think we can expect a $2,500 ETH? You know, I haven't looked at ETH in a while. I mean, not seriously, other than a futures trade, which I'm shorting, and I'm just kind of letting it ride, so I don't really have to pay attention. Oh, we need to, uh... Well, you blasted all through my mouth. You suck, road dog. I sold there and they went on to make $4,000. You suck. <laughs> okay. Well, this is a daily chart too, right? Let's take a good look at Eve. I need to keep up with Eve and know what she's doing anyway, right?
She's had a good ear for support. I don't... It can hold, but it doesn't mean it's going to. It looks like it's got just a little bit more wiggle room that it could play with, is, is what I'm seeing here. So maybe 2807? I mean, I'm not saying that she can't go lower. I'm just saying if she does go lower, it may go a lot lower than what you were even looking at. If we break this trend line, that's not going to be good. So I would hope that she doesn't go lower than 2800. That she just kind of wicks down there. But uh, no guarantee she'll get our fib line that we've only touched one time this past week as we took this big dump was uh, 2893. The other two times, we didn't even come close to it and bounced off a, an equal area. It looks like there's a double, a double little bottom, or, you know, an area of support here. I'll put it that way. So 2807 is kind of what I'm seeing, and it looks like there may be kind of like a, if you want to go really local, well, how you want to do it? You know, a falling channel. Yeah, let's just go with the falling channel. Or wedge. However you want to define it, that's kind of, I, I, to me, I think 28. And if we lose that, then we're looking like, you know, down here, our next stop, bid-wise, is 21.25, which I uh, would expect it to hit if we lose this level. We didn't even take a, a shallow measure move from this high just to that trend line, and that would give you way down here at 1,700. So clearly an important area to hold. So we might wick to 2800, maybe even just a wick down just a little below 2800. That's fine, but closing the candle. No candles need to, to be opening and closing below this trend line whatsoever. Or best results to the upside, anyway. And here on the daily, we are beneath the 200 moving average. The price may wick to it and touch it. Like what we're talking about, it, and that's coming in at 25, 26. Not quite seeing it. Let's see this 100 doing a pretty good job of holding right now. And if we can get a bounce there, then we, we're, you know, we're on par to come back and retest this $4,000 area, which is kind of cool. And there is a little bit of hidden divergence there. Yeah, I see a good chance of bouncing off 28, honestly. Grimmer says, what do you think of Omnium Network? The token was just released yesterday. Then I have really no thoughts about it. Omni Cat, is that it? And Wormhole. Make your token stand up. Hey, I can. Oh, dude, I can lean back. This big ass microphone in my mouth. Check. Wow, she kind of lost her. She just came all the way back down and ranged. Usually, you, you will see them kind of, you know, come up and come down a little bit and range somewhere in the middle or... Wow. It's a little bit of a trend there, so it's got that going for it. That's cool. It possibly double bottom. Well, I guess this low is equal to that low, so that's nice. And then we got a, a slight upward trend there. So that means it could possibly come back down and retest that trend. It doesn't have to. The trend line doesn't have to. An 886. Is that not marked? I don't have an 886 marked on here. What's wrong with you, man? That's a bottom and fib. Right. 
She's holding on the 7H6, that's cool. Let me go over here and adjust this fib. You don't have an 8H6. For real? Yeah, do now. So point zero 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 four one nine five point zero 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 four two. That area might come into play, but the area that she's been bouncing off of at this point zero 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 five area seems to be holding really nice. So retest the moment trend line there, or just keep on going from where we are. She looks good. She made a higher high. It's been making higher lows, so. Might be a little bit of a recovery, just a, a reaccumulation after that big pump and dump. I don't know if there'll be a total recovery. I, I don't know about that, but it's showing some signs that, you know, we got three little rounding, uh, well, you call that three rising valleys, I believe. Is it time to learn? Is it time to learn a pattern? It may be time for a Bukowski moment. And time to make the donuts. 15 minutes. Put it on snooze. You go over to the chart pattern over to the index and there's a pattern called three rising or three rising valleys. Looks a lot like an inverted head and shoulders some people would call them. Ah, la, 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 la. Technically, each valley should look similar. So they should be, your example sucks though. Price in usually upward leading to the pattern. Usually. Look for three valleys. The bottom of each valley must be above the prior one. Each valley should look similar. Select the all, select all narrow ones or all wide ones. All short or all tall. Don't mix them. Trends downward. The volume trends downward 64% of the time. And the confirmation pattern confirms when the price closes above the highest peak of the pattern. High speak of the pattern would be that little guy. So basically, whether it is or not, if you um, steal. Draws you a channel. And then we break out the channel, and then it's on, baby. And um, they just draw a horizontal, horizontal line would be a good one. So she she seems to be making a bottoming pattern. So the biggest one that I'm getting, and, and a measure move that you can take up to point zero zero two one area, two one five area. What would that be? Percentage wise. Oh, crap, man. That's like 309%. If it reaches that, just it going to the top of the. Just going to the top of the channel. It's about 132% gains just for it to go back up to where it needs to go. Confirm that it's a bot, you know. The, just to confirm the pattern itself. It's like it already did. And what it do? So, wow, man. That's some nice games. She's got to catch on, that's all. Ford Nerd says, I want to nail the bottom of a bigger asset. I'm all for nailing bottoms. I'm just saying. I think that's an admirable goal, Mr. Ford Nerd. Miro Raymond, hey, man. Where do you think Proppy is going? Um, I put in 600, now I'm down to 390. Woo! Let's take a look at Proppy. I think Proppy's going to do... I, th I think it's a, it's a good investment, a good longer term hold. Um, expecting quick money out of it, I don't know. Depends on the hype that will come around it right now. I mean, real world assets are kind of hyped up right now, but... 
Ooh, you must have uh they must have got you up here if I'm showing all of this shit. Running Take a hit. Spin the scale of my business this year. The world in my palm, I'm a star. I deliver my cadence. I'm serving up chills to my peers. Bringing the breath. Let's say I'm proppy. I'm over on Coinbase daily chart. Everything coming together. So far, she's finding respect there. No kidding. They hit it. California. Let me, um. I'm out here playing the keeping. I pull up. She leaking. She want me for the weekend. My foot on the gas with her brakes. Hit me a little. She's so new. I think I want to go with the four hour just. So I can see see what's going on a little bit better. Get my angles a little bit better here. So we were, we were following, you know, this parabolic move that it had. Because she saw the signs of moving parabolically. And then she started losing this trend line, which, you know, that means the parabola is probably mostly over. It would have bounced off of this and went higher if we were to really continue it. Then we had a secondary one, which we broke. And so far, this third one seems to be holding, and it may continue. It should. It needs to continue to hold. Um, there's a couple of others over here. Let's identify those real quick. Ultimate bottom, which we probably won't come down that low. And then this little guy, which we might. Because you've already lost, or it's already lost this one. So a scenario like this, what you could be seeing at some point, there might be a retest of this before it comes down. So that, I don't I don't know when you got in, but that might give you a chance to recover some losses if that happens and play it and buy down here. Or it may just continue on down. So I mean, we can't really tell at the moment. Nine moving average crossed over the 100, so that does kind of suggest it might go ahead and move on down to these areas. I think these would be some good areas to add to your bag, though. That would help offset any losses that you have. So if you bought it like at 370 and you buy somewhere around $2, that lowers your price of entry. And that way, when we do get a bounce and we make come back up to this previous high or go up, then you're in profit a lot quicker than if you just sit around waiting. Or price to come back to the price that you bought it and they go up that makes sense so that's what a, a lot of uh, traders and investors would will do to help get in profit quicker but uh, I would see that let's see what else we can figure out I've got this box here and it's in my it's annoying me and let me get rid I got older lines here and right now I can't remember why I got them there and they're not relevant so I'm gonna get rid of those and now let's do a little a little fib magic There we go. Got you. You're a five. That's interesting. Okay. All right. I have to find something with some extra confluence up here at the top. And because we got it here on some of these other levels. So 
yeah, actually, I'm, I'm sticking with this $2 area because I got two, uh, 205 really coming in on one of these fib levels. You should get support there at 205. I don't rule out 183. Don't rule it out. I'm just saying. Over the big, big gist of this whole thing that we got. I mean, it's out. I don't. Keep it on the back burner. 183 might sneak in there, but 208 should hold. If we can get a bounce from these areas, there is a good chance that... Uh, we can reach this area as, as a target at six dollars and fourteen cents there and a little bit of a pattern that might take us up there let's uh And so awesome if this bottom trend line that we're on right here, the one goes to 208, that holds and we bounce off of that and then, yeah, we can still be in this megaphone pattern. And I am getting some confidence at 614, not saying that it's going to instantly go there. It's going to have a bumpy ride, but that one is um, definitely on the table there. And that's about 192% gains. He said, oh, I got in at 384, just realized he got in at 384. Ooh, that was, yeah, okay. Well, that's not the worst thing. Biggest lesson you can learn is think about what made you get in there. And, um, I mean, I, I don't know, but I, I would venture to guess it was probably that somebody probably called a cup and handle to the outside and got everybody excited and, um, you know, didn't really realize that we were looking at like a double or possible you know, top there. So, you know, I mean, those things are definitely known to happen. I've seen that happen many, many times. So, but imagine, I mean, I don't know how, what you said, okay, six, and you have three. So if you even put, I don't know, another 25% of whatever you put in up here, down at the bottom, anything that you can add to it down at these bottoms will help bring this average cost to, you know, three, what was it, 380, 370 something, 378, you know, that, that would just, yeah. Making a buy through here, making a buy through here, that, that would help, you know, your average cost here. That would help bring it down. And then that way when price does, you know, does what it does and comes back up, by the time it gets back up here, you're in profit. And if you want to leave or, you know, pull out some of your collateral or however you want to do it, de-risk a little bit. Decide if you still want to be in this project because a lot of times when you get in at a high point like this and ride them to the downside, we, we get a little biased and we get a little salty toward them. I mean, that's just our psychology. Even though it might be a really good project we should hold into, but, you know, we, we're kind of like, dude, I'm done. I'm done. Not fun. I don't want to do that again. I just, let's just shake hands and go, you know, you, you might want to go in your own way or something. But uh, I think she's got a good chance to do a lot better than what she's at. I, I'm in it. And uh, I'm sure I'm in drawdown two from wherever. I can't remember what? when I got in. Just say hello? Nah, I'm well, it was before this, though. 
you like that Star Wars reference, baby? There's more with that. But I, you know, catch a movie later. I would just chalk that up uh, as a lesson and try to, you know, whatever it was that made you want to buy there. Make notes on it and try, you know, try to identify that the next time, that same feeling. Slender says probably going to rip this year. Yeah, I agree. I think it's going to do really good. It needs a good pullback because, I mean, it just got so much hype. Everybody's trying to go on the real world asset stuff. I mean, everybody and their sister's talking about it on YouTube, right? And it deserves it. It needs to be out there. But uh, there's some people talking about it before. And I was looking, and I've gotten into some of the real world asset things before, like, uh, but then the, the narrative, the big narratives finally shifted over there. I was kind of surprised about DPIM because usually anything that takes physical infrastructure, that's a laggard. And it may still be a little bit, they are kind of a laggard right now, but they still got more of a narrative and more of a use case now. So hopefully the DPIM projects will also turn out really well. At some point they will, they'll be the bomb, but sometimes things are a bit earlier. Strega says, Thega, Thega's down too. I saw that earlier today, man. That's another one I've got on uh, spot margin. So uh, it lets me build another bigger bag. They've been doing some things partnership-wise and I think technology-wise lately. Should give them a little bit of a boost. I don't know if they're going to be corner of the market or anything, but... Are you doing the stiletto pattern? It's not really a stiletto pattern, but... Uh, she may be making an Adam and Eve. Meaning that this area down here, wherever this one is, this trend line is, dollar eighty-three. that area may be holding... May not even see it again. She's a uh, buff. You're on the 15 minute. Let's, let's zoom out. Good lord. So you lost that. Yeah, this can hold. Nice over here that we did hold. There's just uh, what what's what's what else you got? There's there's nothing. There's not. Oh, sucks. Okay. So if we look to the left, our next area of support is down to 164. That sucks. I don't want to see that. And then we fall all the way back down to 145 at the tops. So she... Two more minutes. So she can fall. I mean, yeah. Daily, we got support on the 100. That's cool. Now, on the bigger time frames, this was like some of the other ones looked at, man. The, the 200, the 100, and the 50, they're all doing what they're supposed to. We're finding the spore in the 100. She can bounce here. Uh, what she does when she gets back up to the nine moving average, she, you know, she might, you know, might be. Data's probably going to be shaky for a little while. Have to go through therapy, talk to her counselor, all that stuff for a little while. Well, she lost that trend line, but uh, she looks like she can recover without having to come all the way back to the bottom of the pattern. Gosh darn it, man. This I, I hate to put a price label down here, but it, it's on the table. It could happen. I hope it don't, but it could. On the bright side, we can look at it. This way is a local pattern. Connecting the dots here and see we got this downward megaphone, which is actually really bullish. It's just got to find a partial decline, meaning that this might be it. And she goes sideways, and then she starts making a recovery and bounces up. There's actually a 70% chance for this to break to the upside. So if there's any hopium, that's what I'm running with. That, that, I mean, that's legit. So breathe it in, baby. Breathe it in. Inhale. Remember, says that's not the Omni that I met. I'm lost. Haven says my 60x so long is up 118 percent. I should should I take out my initial and let it ride 131? Y yes, if you are up 118 percent and you have not taken out your initial capital, you, you might want to look at your um, trade management. Yeah, it's a great idea if it. Well, so you take your collateral out now, you, you've already won, and now you're just letting it rain. B 
be that guy. Be that guy. There is no way you can lose it. No way you can ever lose it. Even as a mark, even if Bitcoin goes to zero tomorrow, even you won that. So, uh, I'm just saying. The conversation here. Hey, there's Mr. Miles. How's it going, Mr. Miles? It was just released yesterday. Okay, so we're just talking about one that we looked at before, and I'm off. Um, Grim, if I didn't catch on something that you had a question about or something, just put it in there, and I'll, I'll go back over it. But I'm having trouble connecting the dots as I'm catching up in the chat there. The Federal Reserve will make sure you lose it, even if you, even if you take profit. That's a good point. He's got a very good point, Haven. Yeah. And then you get these freaking senators and, and congress people out there that actually entertain the idea or these people they appoint oh, it was yelling it was Janet Yellen over at Federal Reserve that had that idea of unrealized gains unrealized gains how does that even work oh, on this day you happen to be up you know $50,000 on your Bitcoin trade and the next day you're down you lost it all but for that one day, you were up, so pay his taxes. I, I, what the hell? That's when things are just getting stupid, and you know they're truly bankrupt when they're starting to beg for money. We already got marijuana legalized. They, already, they long said if marijuana ever gets legalized, that means the U.S. is bankrupt. I agree with that. Nothing wrong with legalizing it, though. I'm just saying. I'm not saying make it illegal. I'm just saying you're bankrupt. Probably wish they'd done it a long time ago. Be honest. Yeah. Cheap Peppy got airdropped to Phantom Wallets um, today. It's it's a buck tooth nerdy Peppy. That sounds cool. Um, I've gotten a lot of little meme coin airdrops over on Solana and over on. Um, my Xverse, is it Xverse? Xverse wallet, my BRC20 wallet, um, the Stacks ecosystem. Man, I've got so many meme coins popping up. I don't know. It's hard for me to navigate that wallet. It's like they're just, they just show up, lots of them, and I just let them sit there. But I, I like airdrops. I don't care what they are. You give me free tokens, I'll take it. But um, that's another one, the BRC20 tokens. It's a, an ecosystem you probably want to. And base, base Solana and uh, BRC20 seem to be the hot things. And airdrops are starting to become a thing. I like that. Seeing where this is heading, Paul Bear Network had a great little show today, and seeing some of the interviews and some of the clips that he had played, and even putting more dots together, you can see the narrative of a. Uh, it was very interesting where. Companies and things like that are, you know, they're using advertisements, Google ads, this and that, whatever, to get things across. And now they're starting to realize, well, if we just don't advertise and spend our money advertising, and maybe we, like the gamers, for instance, is one area. What if we just start airdropping to users? Because you're trying to bring in users and trying to get people to your platform. And when you advertise, maybe you get somebody over there that's will use it maybe they won't to see your ad and it goes on but if you're actually giving them value and then you're kind of enticing them oh you got an airdrop oh you should probably go check that ecosystem out or at least nothing else you know we can cash in on this airdrop or you qualify for another airdrop and you know yeah. it, but I like that I mean that's cool instead of paying other people to manipulate you you're paying your users that you actually want to bring in hey you're actually giving something out there and getting something in return and that's wow what a concept mr miles says KR krc20 is inbound get ready for that krc20 for caspa i figure they would call that the uh kas20 or something because i thought who shares already did kr 
But anyway, yeah, the Casper is getting that, and that's going to be awesome. Hope they, I hope that goes well. I hope they do some big things there. But Haven says the second stage vote went live this morning on Jupiter. Hey, we've not done the news. I knew I was forgetting something. Time for the Aqua News. Day in crypto. Ape Yuga Labs divesting some of its games. Fairway is acquiring HV, MTL, and Legends of the Mara. Centrifuge released 15 million in a Series A funding led by Parify Capital and Greenfield. Avagachi has announced that the Ghost GHST is now live on Base Chain. Team plans to, to deploy Gachi Chain, a base secured layer three solution by June. Merlin Chain has been announced to secure new investments co-led by Spartan Group and Hailstone Labs. Ontology launched a 10 million initiative to accelerate DID solutions. Omni Network has teased that Genesis Takens will be released soon. Ronin has announced a partnership with Ragnarok. The game has planned to be released in quarter three of this year, and Sui has announced a partnership with Byte Dance's enterprise tech arm, Byte Plus. Meanwhile, Worldcoin announced World Chain Layer 2 will be released this summer. Zigli has announced a Layer 1 chain called ZigChain and announced a 100 million ecosystem fund backed by DWF Labs. The hottest outgoing news. Coming from Layer GG at Twitter X. Give him a like and a follow. Hey, yeah. We did it. We did it. For real, you guys, we did it. Gaming going to pump in quarter three. It seems to be the narrative, yeah. And actually, you know. Like I said, I'm not that big of a gamer, but uh, seeing that, I mean, I, and I've, I've, I've said, man, how many layer ones do we need? How many layer twos? But I, you can see specialized layer ones. I can see that happening, especially uh, when it comes to the adoption that we're having from real world. When we're talking about brands coming over. And uh, like we were just talking with the airdrop thing, we may see this carrying over to corporations and businesses where to get you in, in this whole Web3 environment, there were, the, you, you might be getting some incentives to come shop at your local Walmart or whatever is, is on your, or whatever restaurant chain. They're, you know, it's going to be very interesting to see how all of this blockchain innovations are starting to come out. At first, you think of a simple reward token or reward program or something. No, they're doing, they play it right. Um, they can really change the narrative. We're talking about getting a lot of these advertising middlemen out of the picture. And it, it's blockchain really is fascinating. All right, guys, time is now 12 o'clock. It's time for me to turn into a pumpkin, but I appreciate you being here. We went over the news, went over some coins, most of the ones I think that you guys are looking at. I don't think I really had much of a list to talk about tonight after doing the member stream. Uh, thank you to everybody to join me on the member stream. I'm not sure if it is actually a members thing or not. I think I'm clicking all the boxes, but I think anybody can watch it. I think you just can't chat. I don't know. I don't know. I'm, whatever. Anyway. But I, I need to figure that out because there are some things that I don't want just to put out there blindly, freely on the internet that I would be willing to talk about in the private streams but uh let me figure that one out thanks for joining me i'll be back again tomorrow night trade carefully and uh should we take one last look at bitcoin because um it seems like we kind of have an idea what's going on before the morning guy figures out what's going on somewhere around noon um yeah good chance here <laughs> we're on the 15 minute i'm not going to be like that So it looks as though that we are trying to come up and retest a couple of these little areas here. Let's go ahead and mark them out. That way, if you'd watched the show last night, you could be up 23% or whatever. Whatever. 
things we're doing there. So price probably get a hiccup somewhere around 62, 422 might get rejected there. If it makes it past it, I'm looking at 63203. Need to see us gaining some ground here, but ultimately I need to see us get at least up above 64.4 to try to make a higher high to think that, oh yeah, we might be actually getting a little turnaround here and not drop into 50,000 or 48,000 where a lot of people are looking and you know, they have some validity to look there. We're just not full on bullish, but not full on bearish just quite yet. There's a good chance that we're getting played right here very professionally and uh that's what i'm leaning with don't tell nobody though i don't want them all to laugh at me but i think it's we're getting played so 62 ford maybe it's 63 and hopefully we can get above 64 for that would be awesome see you guys tomorrow night treat carefully don't let them take your money god bless you Show you like my vibe, that's my candy on my wrist.